what opinion or behavior would stop you being romantically interested in someone, even if they ticked every other box? Someone who is a bad guest at someone else's house. Actually tonight my GF said I love everything about you, but watching you eat unpeeled kiwis, like they are apples really freaks me out. As long as you kill the kiwi first. Eating the burb alive is just cruel. Taking out the digestive tract helps too. Went on a hiking date with someone who littered. There was no second date. Don't litter you all. It's selfish and ruins the trails for everyone else. A girl told me she had been engaged 6 times. She was 29. I know things happen. But that's a lot of things. I had an ex who consistently lied and omitted things. Usually not about anything huge. But she had a habit of it, and didn't seem to think it was wrong. The longer we dated the worse it got. Eventually it really divided us, because I couldn't trust anything she said. From then on, if I discovered I was with someone who lied often as a tactic. To get what they want. To avoid consequences. Etc. That was pretty much the end of the relationship for me. If the person you are dating, makes you feel small. Not in a physical sense, but like you're less than them. I've learned that's my first sign, to book it out of there. A guy I met who liked me, and I didn't like back was like that. He'd say things, like you have surprisingly nice legs for no exercise I'm an active person, but what the, or he'd say things like seriously? You can cook. I can't believe that. He was adamant I give him a chance this is the main reason I didn't. Unapologetic arrogant ignorance. Minimizing my accomplishments. I knew this woman. And if I said something like, I got a promotion at work instead of saying that it was great and that I was great at my job, she'd say something like, yeah well didn't you say Bill has really been helping you out with stuff? Or if I said, I finally beat an Ironman run of XCOM to she'd say, I wish you'd find a more productive hobby. Puts me down. Hours have passed, arms shaking, sweat pouring down his face. So, ah, uh, sweetie pumpkin, are you ready to get down yet? Being condescending. I hate it. It makes me angry. Be nice to people. Except they may not be as knowledgeable as you on a subject. Don't condescend. I had an ex who was not exactly condescending, but he never once said oh really? I didn't know that. In 5 years of relationship. He always knew everything. Even when it was obvious he didn't. Hoarding. I made this mistake once. I got into a relationship with a hoarder. I eventually realized that her deeply dysfunctional relationship to objects extended to the people around her. I was not an actual person. I was just another acquisition that was acquired and subsequently treated shabbily. I'm not sure if this is common. But I won't take the chance again. I just imagine you're sent to a room with like 50 other guys and they all say in unison. Another one. If they don't even attempt to get along with my friends. Or watching videos on your phone. Volume all the way up at a restaurant. On a double date. Believe or not I dated a guy that did both. And I cringe thinking back on it. The need to always be the right one. Never holding my hand or not having any non-sexual physical contact. It never occurred to me that this would bug me. But at the end it made me feel like she didn't care about me and only wanted to f*** me. Extreme materialism. Who op? This is it for me. I admit that I do consider myself a minimalist. But if people can't prioritize their finances because they need to live beyond their means, that's not hot. He told me he would much rather make small talk with a stranger than have a deep conversation with good friends. I don't know why I didn't see it before, but that described perfectly why we never connected on a deeper level after being together for two years. We tried but I couldn't make it work after that realization. Weirdly. It sounds like you finally had an almost deep conversation, and he turned out to be a veritable stranger. If only he had stuck to his original rules. Littering. Honestly. 
to me. It's not even about environmentalism. You just have to be so incredibly selfish and lazy and entitled to feel like it's not your responsibility to take care of your own trash. That's bound to turn up elsewhere down the road. If they are too selfish. My ex-boyfriend would always say oh no, you want to do this not that every time I talked about doing something one way. It even crossed over into me researching slash buying gear for backpacking or biking etc. He always seemed to know better than me, and I will not ever be able to be with someone again who tells me what to do slash what to buy slash makes me feel like I don't know what I'm doing. If they have toxic friends. For a lot of reasons. I would have thought I could deal with it, but I really agree with that. My ex's best friend was one of the worst people I have ever met, and that should have been a major red flag. Short version. How come you don't express yourself? Proceeds to express myself you're being too emotional. Longer version. I was dating a girl who said I didn't share my emotions enough and would complain that I was too stoic and reserved. I understood where she was coming from, so I started trying to open up more. One of the things I opened up about was an abusive ex that had gotten married recently and how I was dealing with a lot of unpleasant memories as a result. Her response was that's a lot of baggage. I don't like hearing about that kind of stuff. You just shouldn't let it affect you. Adult tantrums. Yep. Dated someone who I thought was great, but would regularly yell and throw tantrums when frustrated. Not directed at me, just general adult tantrums. It was almost funny at first because I didn't think it was serious. It was though. Not being a critical thinker. I've thought of a whole laundry list of things that would be deal breakers, but they all boil down to whether or not he could think critically. The one that surprised me about myself was a whinny voice. Person had everything else going for them, but after a few hours I just couldn't stand the thought of listening to that voice over the long haul. Scientology. Oh man. I've got a story. I was on a date. We went to go see some Mars Seafee movie. The film had bad reviews and the theater was nearly empty, so we were being chatty during the trailers. One of the trailers they show is for Battlefield Earth, and under my breath I safe peeping Scientology. I look over at my date, and he is offended. My skin was crawling as I realized I was on a date with a Scientologist. The need to constantly be on your phone. Totally fine with spending a lot of time on it. But if you can't put it down to watch a movie, or have a conversation then it's a problem. Had an ex where this happened. My best friend's little sister died in a car crash, and I was torn up about it. He became indifferent towards me, because I was too depressed to be with. If someone can't handle, being a decent human being when I'm heartbroken, what are they going to act like, when it's my mom? Dad? Dog even? Whoops sorry but I don't wanna hang out because you're sad. To everyone who went through something similar. All those people suck and we are better off. Not everyone knows how to grieve. But we all find out one day. I hope you're all doing better. <sighs> Dishonesty. If you notice the person you're interested in tells fibs or little white lies early on. It's only going to be catastrophic once you clear the honeymoon phase. I learned they kept important information completely under wraps. It popped up and destroyed my trust in them. So not lying, but not being completely open was bad, too. Being obsessed with social media or needing to document everything all the time and project a perfect version of their life. I had a boss like this. Everything was a freaking photo shoot, just so she could post on social media, that she could prove to her haters, that she had a life. Miserable. Entitled behavior. People who act like the world owes them everything, when they were raised with more than most people. People who demand respect, but treat others poorly. Friend went on a date, where the girl virtually had a tantrum at the wait staff, until she got what she wanted, when it was her peep up, and then looked incredibly self satisfied and smiled at him, as if he should be proud of her. Nope. Arrived separately, left separately. 
bad hygiene. I dated a girl with bad dental hygiene. I didn't think it would bother me as much as it did. You know it's bad when you're scared to kiss. Make me feel like my feelings are invalid or that theirs are more valid than mine. My mom does it and it's crushing. Not having a capacity for compassion or empathy for others, including animals. I do love all your passion though. The world needs people like you. Also, I realize the moral and ethical dilemma of meat production. It's something I think about frequently. I try to give back to animal communities in other ways. Support ethical farms. TNR feral colonies. Fostering. Rescue of hurt wildlife. ETC. Not believing dinosaurs are real. I have a guy I work with who also does not believe dinosaurs ever existed. His logic is that the governments clearly planted them to create tourism. He said, what you just think someone goes to a site, starts randomly digging, and just happens to find whole skeletons in the ground. This man is my boss supervisor. Someone who always talks, but never really says anything. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Being rude to retail slash service workers. My grandpa taught me long ago. Someone who is nice to you, but rude to the waiter slash s is not a nice person. And I have never forgotten it. Being too clingy to quickly. Had a girl tell me she loved me after 4 hours of talking. Asking why I'm not responding etc. It was an absolute no. Dated a guy in the first month he was perfect, and I was quickly falling for him. One day he said, my ex broke up with me, and I've peeped his life up for it haha. <laughs> Turned all his friends on him. Don't f peep with me. He said it like it was funny, and he was proud. Immediate red flag and I instantly started thinking about how I got to break up with him. Thinking housework is women work. Someone who isn't empathetic and kind. Being a cheater, or being physically or emotionally abusive to me, or people and animals around me. Someone who is overly judgmental slash wishes death on someone, just because they think differently to them slash thinks they're the smartest person in the room. I met a guy like this, and it came totally out of the blue for me, because he had previously been everything I wanted. Then suddenly he's explaining to me why he hates most women and why the government needs to be redone with his values at the forefront. Undefined. Gatekeepers. You know. The sort of people that think listening to modern music is gay and that I should listen to what they listen to. The sort of people that'd forbid you from being involved in anything they don't like. My late father once tried to set me up with a woman from his church that he thought I should marry. I indulged him because, frankly, I was curious to see what traits he thought a good wife for me would have. I was visiting my parents at the time and he invited her to lunch with us after church. I'm not religious, but used to indulge him on attending church, too. By the way, I was seriously dating someone at the time, a woman who is now my wife, and he knew this. Anyway, 5 minutes into the conversation I mentioned something I had read, and her immediate response was, and I quote, Oh, I hate Riyadin. Matter of fact, like, I don't think I've ever lost interest in a conversation so quickly. She did not tick many of my other boxes either, but that was hilariously off base. If I'm in a depressive mood yes I have depression. No I don't let it control my life and some days are better than others. By mood I mean a bad depression day, when I can't get out of bed just telling me to get over it, or better yet getting mad at me for being sad. Good news. Haven't had a depressive day in bed, since leaving that ex. Time to sort by most controversial. Gossipy. And into status and cliques. Ablism. Ask girl out. Meet a date. And all is going well, until we start chatting about high school and those innocent regrets everyone has. Like trying too hard to fit in with a certain crowd. Or going heads over heels for honors programs. Menial stuff. Except included in her regrets was doing a walkathon event for autism awareness. In which she called it a tard race. 
She then proceeded to give me her explicit opinion on how retards shouldn't be in school, don't deserve a public education, and how they're basically non-human. Don't think I've ever been so suddenly disgusted by an individual. Being rude to waiters. Being superficial. Anti-vax. Dismissing mental illness. Calling the depressed lazy and that type of thing. I've shared this before. But one time I went out on a first date with this girl I met online. I thought she was very attractive, and we had so much common, that I thought she was perfect. In addition to that we seemed to hit off well through texts. So I figured this date would go well. We are at this bar, and she suggests we play a people watching game where we try to make up backstories for the other people there. I thought it sounded fun. Especially since I played a similar game with friends on the train sometimes. Plus it felt like a good icebreaker to get us talking. Well, she managed to take all the fun out the game, by being ridiculously cruel in all her assumptions for no real reason at all. It felt like she was projecting issues she had onto these people. Like one guy was sitting at the bar alone. Could have been waiting for someone. You never know. But because he was alone he was a f-peeping loser with no friends that hates his life. Completely killed the mood, and I lost all interest in her after that. I just couldn't see myself going on a second date with someone like that. Even if she checked all other boxes. A lot of these things seem like common sense. Right? Baby killers. If we are on a date and they admit that they kill babies for fun, that's a big deal breaker for me. Carlerism. I can't count on both hands how many black men I have talked to and really liked until they started on their tangents about dark skinned women. It's immediately a turn off and I take it quite personally even though I'm mixed. They somehow think I'll agree with their ridiculous ideology when my grandmother, aunts, uncle, and father are dark skinned. This might get buried or downvoted, but I've gone on one too many first dates with people who just talked at me the entire time. To the point where, if I'm on a date with someone new, and they start doing this my brain starts to shut down, and I immediately start losing interest. I get that people are nervous on first dates, and probably talk more, just to fill the silence but like, don't you want to know who I am? Maybe just a little bit. Like ask me some questions. Give yourself a break from talking. It blows my mind when this happens, and then at the end they say oh I really like you, you're great. But they literally know nothing about me, because I just spent the last 2-3 two to three hours listening to them talk about themselves the entire time. I dated a really great girl in high school. Cute. Sweet as could be. Big hearted. But she and her family were just really really into Jesus. And I'm most definitely not and, so we dated for a very long time, but never clicked on that deeply personal level, that we both wanted. And so went our separate way on good terms aided by her moving off for school. Gaslighting. Mistreating slash making fun of homeless people. Dipping. I love kissing, and I just can't. I'm repulsed by it, 